Hi, this is Alan with Alan's Firearms and Guns Plus More, and today we have the Para Ordnance 1911-45. Very nice gun, white dot sights on the back, one of those glow sights on the front, so magazine drops out nicely. Everything about this is standard 1911, but it has a beautifully skeletonized trigger and hammer. It's got a nice big beaver tail on it. It has a bumper on the mag so it doesn't damage when you drop it. Everything else about this is standard. The grips are of the plastic para grips and they're not uncomfortable, but they're not super comfortable either. They're fine for what this is, which is almost a mil spec gun, except for that front sight. Um, the rear sight, both sights are dovetailed, so they can be easily removed and replaced. And it has a stainless steel barrel. Let's take this 1911 to the workbench. We're gonna show you how it's packaged. We're gonna field strip it. We're gonna clean it. We're gonna lube it, and we're gonna put it back together again. Okay, so here we are with the Paro Ordnance at the workbench. Not tagged yet from my shop. Inside the lock takedown tool. I don't usually use them, but I will show you how to in this video. Your safety manual, your power ordinance, magazine, second in the box. Okay, so let's take a look at the para up close. Typical 1911. It's got your slide release, your crescent moon, uh, cut, your slide lock cut, magazine release, magazines pop right out nicely. Um, it has the para, regular plastic power grips on there. If I was to buy this gun, I'd probably replace them with something a little cooler. It's got a nicely skeletonized trigger that has an adjustment for take up. It's got the nice big beaver tail. It's got what they call memory hump on it. I don't know why they call it that, but that's what they call it. And it's your safety also for like most 1911s, skeletonized hammer. And let's take a look at those sights. Okay, so there we go. We'll take a look at those sights. As you can see, the front dot is kind of small. It's not really small. It's a glow sight. See how it glows? If I turn it this way, maybe you'll see a little better because the light is hitting it. Okay. So there's the, the rear two, a white standard. The front is a green glow sight. Um, that's what it looks like on its side. A lot of people do not like those sights, but they are dovetailed so they can easily come off. Let's zoom back. Let's just go right to taking this puppy apart. So the first thing we do is with the tool, this front part right there is you want to push that down. So with the tool, you go down and you go all the way this way, keeping your finger over that, even though the tool helps you because you don't want this going flying. See, it's on that spring. And when you, if you just push that with your fingers, sometimes these things go flying across the room. So once that's out, all the pressure on here is relieved. But what we're going to do is do a half quarter turn all the way the opposite and we can take this out standard cult 1911 browning design barrel cam now all the pressure is off the gun and by just cocking it like this removing the magazine we can easily slide this back we're well, supposed to easily slide this back something's holding on to it there we go I don't know what was holding on to it, but okay, slide this back to where that crescent is over the, the rear of the slide release. Push this little button in right there, which is really the other side of the pin, and now we can just lift it right out. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Forward and it comes right apart. That's what's so nice about these standard issue models. That's your front guide rod. Push that forward. This slides right out the front of the gun. There you go. All standard. 
cleaning this gun is a cinch. Okay, so we're gonna take strike hold. If you want strike hold or you want to know about strike hold, go to my strike hold video on my channel and give you tell you all about it. But it's a one process cleaning system that you clean your gun with and you don't have to lube it afterwards. It will be lubed and protected. If, but we will show you how to lube a gun anyway for those of you who are using old-fashioned gun cleaner. Okay, so I'm going to go in here, clean out these slots with my little stick, press up and down on the firing pin block, make sure that's clean. There's an area in here that's thinner than most um, 1911, so I'm putting it on this little pin just to go up and down there. I'm glad I did. There's some, there's some dirt in there. Put this away. I like wood because I'm not afraid of marring the gun. I could put a lot of pressure on it. Up and down the slots on the slide. That's where it gets full metal to metal contact on the rails of the frame. I'm going to make sure I get my locking lugs inside the frame real clean. Those are the, the counter cuts to this barrel. This locks into that when it's in fire position. You want to make sure they're clean so it goes into fire position easily and properly. Then with my finger where I can reach the rest of it, I'm just going to wipe down the interior of the slide. I'm going to put this on here and get inside the barrel area and the spring area. Okay. I'm going to hit the outside with some strike hold to protect it and clean it. Now I wouldn't use oil on the outside of a firearm. I would use gun wax because gun wax is not going to get on your clothing because it goes on just like car wax and then you wipe it off. That's all clean. Let's get to the frame. These guns are pretty easy to clean. They made that way because they are for the military and they wanted the guys to be able to clean them fairly easily. Up and down the frame rails because that's where you get metal to metal contact with the slide. Get the, fr the, the fronts of it and the flats. If you watch the, some of my other 1911 videos, you'll see they're all pretty much standard. There's some little nuances that are different, but for the most part, they're all the same. The Kimber is a little bit different to take apart, but cleaning it's about the same. Put this in there, go up and down inside there. Now, one of the things that I didn't show you neglected to show you is getting some strike hold on a cloth and making sure your battery is clean. Now in this case I always say make sure your extractor is clean and rub a cloth underneath it but this extractor has such a lot of give to it I can actually push this cloth underneath there while using the stick so that's what I'm going to do doing it right now. It's very important that you make sure your extractor is clean. It's an internal extractor. You won't see it on the outside. You only see it on the inside. Make sure it's clean because if it's not, it'll ride up over around and you'll get yourself a jam. The barrel, make sure you get those barrel lugs nice and clean. The locking lugs nice and clean. Okay. okay, make sure your barrel the inside is clean. You want to pay particular attention to the feed ramp on the barrel, upper and lower, and check the feed ramp on your frame and make sure that's clean. Okay, I didn't show you that before, but I did clean it, so now I just wanted to show it to you. Now, very important, I'm going to take a cloth wrap it around a little thicker piece and I'm going to, with a lot of pressure, move it around and clean the chamber. Because if the chamber is dirty and you, you're shooting, brass expands and contracts. That's how it works. 
when it can, if, it, if it's really dirty in here, it'll expand and contract and get stuck on the dirt and will not extract properly. Wipe down the magazine. Put it on your stick, push down and get underneath the feeding fingers gently because you don't want to bend these fingers. They're integral into the feeding system. If you bend them, your gun's going to jam. Now I'm going to clean off this part and I'm going to clean off this part. Now, this gun, someone took it apart and put it together improperly and I'll show you what they did because I just noticed it when I picked it up. This is the first time I'm cleaning this gun. Okay, this is a one-way spring. That doesn't mean it only springs in one way. It means there's only one way to put it back. Notice there's an open front on this. It just, the spring just stops. On this side, it curls back onto itself. This is important. Whoever put this together had it with the open end that way. The open end goes into your spring cover, okay? So let's put this back together again now that, oh, we gotta oil it, don't we? Okay, so as always, three drops of oil on the cloth. We are going to put it over our stick. We're gonna go in the slots a couple of times each way. Now, do not put oil directly in the gun. All oil does is foul up your guns. It's for metal on metal contact and everything else, you just want to take a cloth with oil on it and wipe it down to protect it from the elements like moisture. But dust and everything else gets pulled right into the oil and it sticks. I told you so. A couple of times up and down slide rails. I'm going to put a little on the ramp. And basically that's it. The rest of the gun I would use gun wax on. And Wipe down the barrel, push your oily raw rag through the barrel, that's just to protect the inside, wipe the ramps, and that's it. I'm going to clean it, wipe this down with some oil, this with oil, and this with oil. Okay, putting this gun back together again, very simple. We, put, we can't drop the barrel in like most semis, you put it through the front. It'll lock in, once it's locked in, I mean it won't, if you lift it up, it unlocks it, so, but when you slide it back, it'll lock in. Take your spring, the closed end, remember there's an open end and a closed end, the closed end goes over your guide rod, and that goes right in here just like this, and there's a little curved part on here. That curved part, obviously that goes down facing the barrel. Then, okay, matching up your guide rails with your slide slots. This should just fall right into place. You're gonna line up your, your holes with, from your barrel and your lug, and a little lug. This goes in. Lift it up over. Now, this particular firearm, power was smart. They made the top of this rounded so you can actually push it up and it will push the pin, the retaining pin, out of the way. And then all you have to do, once you have the, that, that little crescent lined up, is push that down and it's in. And there we go. Now, this goes back into that quarter turned position. You just turn it and it'll drop right into place. Push it right through the spring. So now it's out of the way on the other side. Take your spring cover, put it on, press it down, and move this back over. You can see it will grab the edge and you can move it over. You saw how fast I did it by hand. That's why I said you don't really need the tool. To take it off, sometimes you do, it's helpful. Um, but to put it back on, not so much. Function check. 
fires, not pressing the uh, palm safety, doesn't fire. Pressing palm safety, regular safety, doesn't fire. Safety off, fires. Magazine, magazine release works. Magazine stop release works. Magazine release works. Slide release works. There we have it. The Para 1911 field script, cleaned, oiled, and reassembled. I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe to Allen's Firearms. Until next time.